right, let's get into our first uh, major discussion of the day now. Nigeria's economic growth has been declining since quarter two of 2014, culminating in a recession in quarter two or the second quarter of 2016. Yes, indeed. Now, the recession was technically over in uh, the second quarter of 2017. However, several economic activities are still contracting or recovering very, very slowly. A recession is consistent with an increase in unemployment as jobs are lost and job creation stalled. A return to economic growth provides a platform for creation of employment. Well, however, employment growth may lag and unemployment rates worsen, especially at the end of a recession and for many months after. Now, this might just be the case in Nigeria now as the latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, showed that the percentage of unemployed Nigerians increased uh, from 16.5 or 2, actually 16.2 percent in the second quarter of 2017 to 18.8 percent in the third quarter. Mm. And according to the NBS, the number of unemployed and underemployed people within the labor force increased from 13.6 million and 17.7 .7 million respectively in the second quarter 2017 to 15.9 million and 18, point, 18 million uh, in uh, the third quarter in 2017. Yeah, the data agency further revealed that the total number of people in full-time employment declined uh, from 52.7 million in the second quarter of 2017 to 51.1 million in the third quarter of 2017. So many figures there that we could, you know, reel out uh, for you. But we've uh, uh, since been joined by Dayo Lomuagun, who is an accountant and a public affairs analyst. He'll be looking at this with us this morning. And, of course, Dotun uh, Ojon, uh, who has been with us already, is a development strategist. Uh, good morning again, uh, gentlemen. Good morning, gentlemen. You. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of these figures, look, since this government came into... Uh, pies had a number of programs to you know drive employment and yet you have the employment from you know uh, going down from 14% uh, to over 18% almost it's it's moving towards 20% right now of the uh, labor force what exactly do you think is going on i think um, the the i think the first challenge we have as a nation is a uh, we we we're trying to create employment in one area mm -hmm. and we also at the other end we're also saying we don't want to create employment that people in employment should go back home and, and how do i mean mm -hmm. uh, now if you look at since this administration came in the, the kind of policy you know in trying to do maybe high corruption in trying to do this right to do that you send so many people away from this economy many foreign direct investment you push them away you, you hardly see them coming in and this is where your employment is created. How many people is the federal government going to give job? Mm. Now, if, if the small and medium scale businesses cannot thrive, if the economy, the, 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 the environment is too harsh for them to survive, that is the effect. So it doesn't matter whatever program you are doing, whether it's UN, whether it's uh, Empower, it's Empower mm. it, it doesn't matter how much you do in those areas. If the environment is not, and even those programs you're doing, uh, how are we sure you're getting it right? Mm -hmm. For example, I give you something on empower. Now, who are you actually empowering? Okay. Now, uh, people who are who who are beneficiary. Who are they? Uh, and I can I, I, I can I can tell you that some of those guys who are beneficiary. Now, what new skill are they being? Taught? I mean, are, are they are they acquiring? What, uh, what what competencies are they acquiring? Are we just throwing money to them? And so they just go to the bank every 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 30, 30 days and they and pick collect. money mm -hmm. and they blow it and they come back. Now, if you stop this program, how many people have you really employed? Whether it's empower or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Now, have they acquired anything? Are we just throwing out money? So if you look at it, uh, 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 we seem to be doing so many things, but achieving very little. Because uh, I see it as, I mean, whatever we're doing, it looks like it's counterproductive. And we are not, we have not sat as a nation to actually see how to improve things. All right. Uh, let, me, let me come to you on this. 18.8% unemployment rate is a big one. But however, mm. for nine consecutive quarters, unemployment has been increasing. For nine mm -hmm. consecutive quarters, consistently, yeah. nine. And here we are now at 18.8%. Just how dangerous is this trend? from what you, what you are seeing generally? 
Yes, yeah, socially it is extremely dangerous. Um, unfortunately, let me just speak it from where he stopped. Mm. You know, it's not just about people losing job. Mm. The unemployment situation, the increase is not just about people losing job. It's about student graduating and, and, not, and not finding the jobs. labor market without a job. Mm. And unfortunately, we traditionally, we are brought up to believe that once you go to school, that your problem is half solved. So I am in the university, for example, I am thinking that, oh, once I get out of university, I go for NYC, that there's no, no matter how bad, I am going to get something doing. So the reality hits me too suddenly that the government has only planned for me to go to school. The government has no plan to take care of my future after graduation. So that's why we may continue to have this figure. Unfortunately, it's, going to, it's having a great impact on our, on our social well-being. I'm going to cite an example from where I live, of mm -hmm. Badu, for example. You discover that the main, many people that were caught as a product of this Badu incident mm -hmm. in the Korodu area, they were jobless. These are young people who could, with just little something, will leave the part of crime. Unfortunately, because they are so hopeless, they do not have anything to do. So when they have, it's just like people joining Boko Haram. The, all they needed was a little brainwashing mm. from one quarter and perhaps... And they are the readily land, available. Yeah. And they are readily mm. available. This is a major danger. That is why even we talk about 2019 and I laugh because I interact with these people daily. I know their mindset. If you do not take care of this timmy population mm. that are coming out of school, we may likely have problems. Now, even, even, even besides those coming out from school, the NBS, if you read the figures and all of that, mm. they also said that those who were gainfully employed... employed. The numbers declined. are reducing. From 51.7 50, 51 million, those, they started saying, mm. yeah, 51.7 million, it declined to about 50, uh, no, 52.7 million to, to 51.1 Let me quickly million. call me Mike. Yeah. Um, sometimes ago, I was working from Ilupuju Industrial Estate. And anytime I'm driving, I see a lot of company. Of course, it's an industrial estate. But go there now. Mm. You discover that many of these companies are closing down. Mm. You may not get to know because they don't no normally open their gates. Mm. But the reality is that many of these people have left, left the country, not just because of the dollar and naira wahala, simply because of the fact that they've continued to manage our economy. Our megawatt is still, we are still, is still a prayer point in churches and in mosques that huh. we hit 5,000 megawatts. <laughs> in a country of uh, 200 million people. So these are some of the challenges that, that we have. And until we are conscious about solving them, and y y you may say even 18% is a lot, or the number is a lot. But the fact is that the day we capture the real figure of those people who do not have job in Nigeria, mm -hmm. maybe that's the day we we'll exactly, exactly. Truly mind-boggling. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that you know, some of the policies of government are actually counterproductive, uh, driving away foreign direct investment and all of that, which is, of course, part of where employment generation should come from. The fact remains that government is the largest employer of labor right now in Nigeria. And not much is being done in the area of infrastructure. Rail, for example, in places like the UK, over 200,000 people are employed from, you know, by the rail uh, sector alone, and it is private sector driven. How can we begin to, to uh, take government out when it comes to employment generation and give it to the private sector that's the, the real driver of the, of the economy? You see, my, I, 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 I'll just say this. It is not, again, it's not the business of the government to be given employment. Uh -huh. All we're asking the government to do is create the conducive atmosphere and you see people get fully employed. Which well, is well, what we learn in the textbooks. Exactly. So well, why is it like rocket science that government cannot provide that enabling environment for, for jobs to be created? Again, it's not, uh, it's not like a rocket science. It's, you know, like you mentioned, until we, are, until we begin to, I mean, until we become serious in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether, I mean, your unemployment and the figure we are rolling out, as, as you just mentioned, from 18%, and, and even the people that say they are gainfully employed, who are they? The mm -hmm. people who graduate that collect 10000 a month, mm -hmm. is that employment? Uh, that, that cannot buy a bag of rice? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have That's the real figure... part of the underemployment. We, we don't know mm -hmm. what, uh, what, what, what problem we are having in our hands. I think guys in my office, I said, look, in the coming days, if we continue this way, mm -hmm. it will be dangerous to dress like this. Or they, ah. they will mob you in, in broad daylight. Because guys down there, they are hungry. And you see, it's not a rocket science. Again, it is the problem with the political elites. 
with the political class who want to rob the poor and rob the poor and rob the poor. You, you, you come, I mean, if you talk about your roads, how much does it cost you to build roads, a kilometer of road? And in, in this country, if you listen to how much we reel out as the cost of project in this country, and you go to some other country, even the, the neighboring African countries, what they achieve with little money. We come here, we can't achieve half mm. of it, one mm -hmm. third of it. Mm. So again, it, it, you can't separate this from the challenges we have in our hand in society, the corruption, the abuse of our power, the abuse of authority. So it's one problem leading to, to another. another problem. There, there is, of, of course, overall corruption. And then you have the issue of power. When there's no power, uh, like, like you said, you know, factories are closing down, uh, companies are shutting down. Textile, the textile industry, for example, is a major uh, mm. victim of the rot that has gone on in the system. So how do we ch begin to change this uh, narrative? You, you said you know, earlier that government is only interested in providing education. And the question that came to me was, is government even ready you know, to, to ensure <laughs> that its populace is well, is well educated? educated? Isn't that where it really should start from, that you have a functional kind of education that prepares you for the real world, that prepares your mind to be innovative and all of that? Now, I, I have a very real opportunity to, to have attended both the Polytechnic and the University. Mm -hmm. Now, the concept of polytechnic really is to, is to produce a mid middle class set of people who will be innovative enough to help the economy. But you know what? The government with policies have discouraged people from going into the polytechnic. Because after mm. spending five years, for example, in the polytechnic, mm. when I hit the labor market, I knew I still had a problem in mm. my hand. So I didn't have the choice now to go back to school. That is where the problem starts from. We must begin to redesign our education to fit our peculiarity. We have a peculiar problem in this country, and the peculiar problem is general capacity collapse. Mm. How do we solve this? We go back to the drawing board. It may not produce immediate result, but that is the way forward. Okay. And as we continue to move on, people then begin to believe in the workability of the system. Now talking about creating the, the, uh, a good environment for businesses. We are not talking about big companies. We are talking about small scale entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bank of industry is there today, but who are they giving funds to? And even microfinance. As banks. a young man, mm -hmm. as a young man, I approached the, the then Agri Development Bank. I cannot forget this story. And I got there. They said, "Come today, come tomorrow." Why? Because they do not believe in me, or perhaps I was not a PDP. Because another problem of government is that once they set up a policy, you win. Before you win, you have to be a PDP. Oh. Empower. Before you are in power, you have to be APC. Until we see that we have a peculiar national problem in our hand and we identify people. It's not as if the government is not doing anything, but we need to be serious. And one of the ways to be serious is driving to know the number of the population in Nigeria. First Who off. really are we? Mm. The empower you talk about, sir. It will shock you to know that so many people that are receiving money from Empower today have jobs. Mm. Why those who mm. do not have jobs are roaming the street? Mm. Why? Because they have jobs and they belong to APC. They have a, a, a world leader they can talk to who's going to talk to the state chairman who will do this and they get a job. Mm. So until we put our nation first and we redesign this concept of education mm. for everybody to know that you are going to school, not just we want to produce a whole Nigeria that mm. will be able to come out and help the economy. Unfortunately, if the, if the political class does not live a lifestyle that suits the populace, the populace are not going to come out and say they want to help Nigeria. All right. Uh, the, the, the Nigeria of 1970s and early 80s, where Africans looked, in fact, the world looked forward to that Nigerian, the Nigerian passport, the Nigerian identity, the Nigerian... Yeah you know, um, uh, concept and skill and all of that was something the world was looking forward to with hope. Now, if we come to the enabling environment we always talk about, what is this enabling environment for all of these things mm. to thrive? What is really that ena enabling environment that government is supposed to provide for things to work? Uh, you, you see, it, it's unfortunate. Mm. Uh, while I was growing up as a little boy, mm. my, 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 my dad did a, lit, a little politics. Mm. The same manifesto, mm in the 80s, early 80s, mm. early, late 70s, is the same kind of manifesto we still have today. That's true. It wow. has never mm. changed. 
provision of social amenities. It has never changed. Mm. Good roads, <laughs> hospitals, uh, what again? electricity. Yes. We have not left that state three, four decades after. And so what we are asking from the government is it, not a big deal. It's not out of this world. Mm. We are saying, let the roads function. Let the rail be working. Yeah. Let electricity, you know, anytime you have light, I was, I, 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 I was looking at a video recently where a guy was saying, please, uh, PHN, come and take your light. <laughs> I've been having light in because the last four or five days. This and is this suspect. is abnormal. This is suspect. This is suspect. <laughs> You're up to something. Yes, that is crazy. <laughs> Even there was comedy, it, though. Exactly. So, yeah. so it, 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 it's, uh, it's just those basic amenities. Once those ones are sorted out, people will get employed. You know, somewhere, so, so you have artisans who cannot work now because there's no light. Let's talk about, you know, um, the overemphasis on paper qualification, which is what Dotun suffered. He went to Polytechnic and had to go back to university. And now the Polytechnics have even been collapsed to... To a degree to awarding. To degree and, awarding and, 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 and institutions. In and yet, yeah, before you even say what you, know, uh, what you have to say, I, I recall, was it Reagan, Ronald Reagan, you know, former U, uh, U.S. president that said, the people who really build the United States are the plumbers, the carpenters, the artisans, and the rest of them. And those are not people you find in universities. As a matter of fact, it was shocking for me the first time I went to Europe to discover that one, I mean, like four out of five people that you meet actually are products of, you know, vocational, you know, uh, schools, schools uh, yeah. and what have you. It was, it's very rare for you to come across a university graduate. And these people are, you know, gainfully employed. So, <laughs> you, know what you, you, to uh, say? you say, again, like, like you mentioned, where do you get those kids from? Mm -hmm. In fairness to this guy. Is it mm -hmm. in the university? In the polytechnic. The uh -huh. guys in the polytechnic, they are more grounded than many of us that went to the university. Mm -hmm. It's only in Nigeria that, you see, our education, the way we design our curriculum, is it, not, not to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. It is not to be able to sustain yourself. So it's only in this country that you go to, to a, a secondary school, for example, you do biology. And uh, those days when you do biology, you, you're dissecting something, you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. it's alternative to biology, mm. alternative to practical. Exactly. You don't need to do practical. It's, it's only optional. in this country that you see somebody wow. who, who raised agricultural science. And, and he has, has never not seen, been he will be asking you whether a mango, a mango is a, you <laughs> dig it from the ground or it's cut <laughs> from the air. So <laughs> until or a yam, a yam grows on the tree exactly. or something. So until we redesign it. Uh, and... Uh, you see, let the individual who is going to school, the jobs are not out here. So redesign your curriculum such that people are already taught the basic things of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. They are already taught how they can survive. And like you say, the, the challenge most people have when you come out of school is, uh, oh, I have a good idea. This looks brilliant. But where do I get money? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the big boys in those parties, you, can't get, you seem not to be able to get money. So again, we, so we, should look we, at we have a situation where you, you, what, you know, what you can describe as the politicization of the employment. Uh, Everything. And I, think it, and I think you caught across. You see, again, there's no time you talk about this because it's a ripple effect of some other thing. Mm -hmm. you, you may begin to think of, so for example, how can you say about 34% in Ondo State or thereabout, or in some of these southwestern states, where, yeah. you, where you have land and you have arable land where you can plant, and they are unemployed. How can you talk about that? Mm. Now, if you create settlement, a new settlement where people can work, where people can, you see, and again, it has to do with our, 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 our the way we think in Nigeria. So in some other places, there's dignity of labor. Uh -huh. If I'm a cleaner, I'm respected for being a cleaner to the extent that I do my job very well. Mm -hmm. In this country, it's only those who have the money, the big boys that are respected. And who has the money? They're the politicians. So, so they, they, they get your money. They get maybe 100 naira from you, and mm -hmm. they give you one naira. And we clap for them, we celebrate them. Uh, uh, until we begin to think that everybody is important. So it doesn't matter whether you have gone to the uni, it doesn't matter whether you have gone to the polytechnic, mm -hmm. it, it, it's what you have to offer. In some other climate, nobody talk about certificate. Mm -hmm. Less sure. less emphasis what on certificate. What can you bring to the mm -hmm. table? So in Nigeria, now once you come out of the university, you must have a BSc, then it's another MSc, oh, then there's an MBA you mm -hmm. have to do, oh, then you do P PhD, they are asking for to be a driver in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so I've seen that. 
where a PhD is and, applying and then, to be and, a diver. And then sometimes you feel blessed if you if you if you if you're flashing your certificate and it comes from outside Nigeria. Oh, then, and you then are, it gives you a status. You, you, are, you are first class. And you have that accent. Mm. You are then first you class. Then you can't status. be made a minister. No, it doesn't matter whether you can even do the work or you can't even do the mm. work. Okay, so so until we begin to look at it holistically, and the sad thing about it is, you know, people APC recently, I mean, they recently came up, uh, 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 across to us that now they, their thinking is right to to restructure the economy, to do this, to do that. You see, what what business do we have with unemployment? There is a, a, a natural resource in every local government in every this country. Every corner. Mm -hmm. Every, mm. So I if you look at restructure your system, give more power to the state, you know, so they can begin to tap this. Now, we are talking about federal, federal, federal. Even the federal government cannot successfully tap the oil, crude oil. It's only crude oil we're asking them to tap. Mm. And we cannot get PMS to use. We cannot get anything. Mm. Why not devolve the power and let's see whether it could help the situation? All right. Now, Dr. The, the way to go now, it, where should we really start from? The labor force, that's the people themselves, the Nigerians, the raw individual Nigerians, is an asset we have not really explored the way it's supposed to be. Capital is another area where you have the, you have the employed people, sorry, you have the individual. Without that capital, a lot of them cannot work. Mm -hmm. And then the, the new era of technology is another area. So where should we start from in this from this what point would we be are, the foundation exactly. that we need to lay okay <clears throat> we have talked about the foundation which is um, rewriting our education system mm. but in the immediate now we need a lot of innovation mm. there are a lot of opportunities here and there that the people may not be able to see because the economic situation is too dark for them to see so the government has to continue to light up these opportunities for them to see. Mm -hmm. And how can your government light up this opportunity when even the people in government cannot see? For mm -hmm. example, I was here last Monday mm -hmm. and I told you that once I, I, I was already making contact to see how ranching work in the US. So that I get it, I see it. Okay, this is how these things work. I'm surprised that some of our governors, even within the Southwest, are not seeing opportunities in this thing. But the same ranching once worked in Nigeria in the mm. 50s yeah. and the 60s. So many you things, had so many things in this country. So many that things, so many things once worked in Nigeria. As of 1986, even after the uh, SAB, the Structural Adjustment Program, our naira is a dollar was still, still not even up to not three to, naira. Yeah. Even after SAB. So there were so many things the Nigerian Airways once worked. There were so many things that once worked. But now I'm talking about the reality of today. So we need innovative governance that will be able to um, gather the people to see opportunities in some of our problems. And they are willing to look beyond their partisan spirit to develop the society. Once we have that, once an average person has a very good idea and there's an office, maybe a graduate development office, where you know that you can submit your idea. It doesn't matter whether you are the son or the daughter of a woman selling plantain under the bridge in my 12. That once you submit a very good idea, that you are going to have headway. Mm -hmm. people, what that will do is it will build hope in the people. And before we know it, we continue to move at that pace mm. and we continue to restructure at that level but if we wait that we are going to go back and start the restructuring from the back the way we are thinking now before we will restructure anything hmm. the time bomb will have exploded mm. whoa so how can we stop this time bomb from exploding yeah some experts have pointed at the issue of over importation let's even move away from these other issues over importation of goods and services in nigeria as a you know that in, in in effect, we're actually providing jobs for countries like China, Malaysia, you know, and the rest of them at the expense of the Nigerian youth that should be working with all their energy and their strength to actually innovate and all of that. We're not doing it. Where do we start from on this issue of over importation? Do we just say, look, enough of importation of, we're even importing palm oil. <laughs> Uh, and palm oil is very good. We are even importing toothpick. Uh -huh. Where you can just cut something. And, you, you see, uh, uh, it's unfortunate. I was talking to my student uh, uh, recently, and I saw that we import practically everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it is sad. And we laughed it off. Ooh, we laughed it off. Now, it's only in Nigeria where you see a company registered as a manufacturing company, mm -hmm. close its plant, and it's importing from China. Close his plan, send everybody home, and it's imported from China. Yeah, because it makes sense for him to import from China, because it's a lot cheaper, 
mm -hmm. and he keeps the market and makes his margin. Okay, but you see, until I think now the time has come when we, we should come to this consciousness. So, if myself, if yourself, will begin to look inward here and say, let us patronize the Nigerian guys, the Ni made the Nigerian made girls. Made in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I may not have bought my, shirt, my, my suit from Nigeria. So, so, so this one is Nigerian made, really. Is mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, I, I got a cup of it and I paid the guy, I paid him just uh, 25,000, 30,000 naira for all the shirt I made. And the guy was happy. For one shirt? No, not one. Oh, okay. Run it to five, six, seven. Wow. Okay, that's an average guy, of about 6,000 naira The guy was naira extremely happy. Mm. Why? Uh, and uh, because he has that big money with him. That's somebody mm -hmm. a salary for the month. And it means he can reinvest into his company. He can get more guys get too. More he can get and more joy guys employ, to join him. Employ more people and improve on the quality of shirts mm -hmm. that he would, you know. Uh, exactly. And I said, I just told you that this is made in Nigeria. You perhaps possibly may not have believed that this is made in Nigeria. Product. And they make suits in Abatu. Exactly. Beautiful suits. All right, we have to leave you here now. Uh, Dio. Uh, Lamu Ogun, uh, accountant and uh, public affairs analyst, thank you very much for coming. And uh, Dr. Right. John, communication and leadership strategist, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> right. Let's go on a break and uh, shortly will be time for the news update and the Gocho Libo will take us there at the time. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll be discussing other issues. Uh -huh. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.